When I was four years old, I, I first started listening to music that I know that I was listening to music. Uh, at my, my grandmother's house, my uncle had these records. And by the time I was six, I was really getting pretty astute about playing records. And I put this record on that I found that he had and I had never heard before. And I put it on and I said, wow, what is this? This is the most beautiful thing I've ever heard in my life, <laughs> which wasn't long, <laughs> it was six years. But it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever heard. And I said to myself right then, whatever that person is doing, I want to do that. And it turned out that was Charlie Parker. And I found out he was playing an alto saxophone. And so I started asking for an alto saxophone. Every Christmas, I would ask my parents. And it took them five years to say, well, I guess he really wants this saxophone, you know. But I was listening to all the music all those years, so I was actually studying it. But Charlie Parker was what, what did it for me. You cannot be a great musician if you don't know how to listen. It's, that's the key because the art form of music is listening, is hearing. Um, we play, people pay money to come listen to us, you know, so if we don't know how to listen, <laughs> you know, we're at a disadvantage. And, uh, you know, a lot, many times there will be people in the audience that can hear just as well or maybe better than some of the musicians. And like I, I tell my students, that should never happen. That's like going to the, to the doctor's office and you know more than the doctor. You know, the, the audience should never be able to hear better than you. So um, that's very important. Hearing is like a fingerprint. And I think everybody here is different. And that's what makes a great musician have, you know, figure out how to find their own sound. Like, Be nobody can sound like Beethoven. Nobody can sound like Mozart. Nobody can sound like Duke Ellington. Nobody can sound like Miles because they all found the way that, the, that they heard. You know, they found out how to tap in to what only they could hear. And, and that's going beyond, you know, that's going beyond just what's here. Because everything you hear, every music that you hear, somebody else heard it first. You know, they had to because you didn't hear it first, so they created it. So now you want to add to that, so you have to, figure, you have to find out how to tap into what only you can hear. You know, I know I have a lot of students, they, they ask me, well, I don't like my sound. And I say, well, what do you want to sound like? Well, they don't know. I said, well, you can't find a sound if you don't know what you're looking for, you know. So once you make up your mind of what, you know, have an idea of what you want to sound like, at least you have something to shoot for. You know, as, I, as I've lived through these years and get to my many lessons, when I was working with Miles, I watched him. He would hire musicians for his band and take them out on the road. So they would tell him, they, oh, I'm working with Miles Davis now, you know, and they would go to see them, but Miles would have them sitting in the audience. Now he's paying them. He's there in the band just to listen to the band and watch the band so that when they finally came up and started playing, they would understand and get And I watched many musicians get so frustrated because, well, I thought I was going to play that they ended up not even doing the gig, not even getting the gig. because, And Miles just wanted to know, can they listen? You know, if, if you have a band of five men or women, and three of them are listening, and two of them are not, 
it's not going to gel. Everybody has to be on. I mean, it's like a basketball team. If one guy is just trying to shoot the ball every time he gets it, and the other guys are working as a team, it's not going to work, you know. So it's the same thing in music. You, you have to um, listen to everybody at the same time so that you know what to do. Like, they need to know when you're ending your solo so that they end with you, you know. So you have to be aware of that. A lot of times, you know, you, you'll end your solo, and if someone isn't listening, they didn't end with you. They were doing something else. And so that defeats the whole purpose, you know, that you're, they're not working as a team. They're, they're listening to themselves. You have to listen to everybody. It's, a, it's, it's a teamwork, you know. I think of myself as a composer. Absolutely, I do, you know. Um, I compose on the saxophone or what people want to call improvisations, which I don't, you know, like I say, it's not an improvisation until I make a mistake. You know, when I make a mistake now, I have to, I didn't intend on doing that, so I got to improvise real quick, you know. But those are only split seconds out of a solo, out of a, like say a five minute solo, it might be, it might consist of 10, 10 five to 10 seconds of improvisation. The rest is composition, you know, so, so um, it's a misnomer and it's very misleading to young, young people because they think it's improvisation. It's, it's not improvisation. You know, it's like I say, you can give a monkey a, a, a saxophone and, and he'll throw it up against the wall. That was an improvisation, <laughs> you know. He can't play it, though. <laughs> If he could play it now, we're talking, you know, but so we learn how to play it. So it's not an improvisation unless we make a mistake. Everything else we, I mean to play, everything I mean to play. was the first religion because you always had to have music for every special occasion in the tribes or who, wherever the groups of people were. Way before they thought about a religion, you know, they would have music for the births of children, for the deaths of people, for their harvest, for the, um, the equinox, for different things. And the music was very important. They had songs before there was written language. You know, so it wasn't written. It doesn't need to be written. They, they uh, heard it and they passed it on, you know. And it came through for centuries. They just passed it on like that, you know. Um, so it, it's, it was very important. So, so important that the head of the musician was the right-hand man of the leaders of the countries, you know, the kings and queens. They... They relied on, the, the, you know, because no one, if you weren't a musician and could create these songs, it was magic. People didn't know how did they do that, you know. These, they were looked up to. Musicians were looked up to like priests and, and um, popes and people like that. Uh, and I always tease. I said, look how far we have fallen <laughs> from those days. <laughs> Most of the young musicians that I see today that have gone to school to, to learn this music, they come out, uh, like I say, that it's a selfish thing because it, I hear ego, I don't hear music. I hear ego, I hear, oh, look at the scales I can play. Look at look what I can do with the horn, you know. I, I don't hear music. And you have to always remember, it's not your show. It's the music show, 
You're there to present the music. The music's not there to present you. But but it's backwards now. It's, you, you know, the music presenting, you know, whoever it is, you know, and that's, that's a problem. Well, for instance, let's take an example of hip-hop, which is the, what the latest innovation in a way you could say. Well, the beginnings of that were very innocent. You know, they were people talking. I mean, just like the blues. There was a comedian that I heard the other day. He was saying, um, uh, he was talking about the blues. He said, man, we invented the blues. He said, we've been trying to tell you about all these problems we've been having all these years because we started the blues, you know. Um, but it's the same kind of thing. Uh, and, and the record... Uh, labels took the beginning, the hip hop, which was really good, you know, and still the, on the great side, you know, it's very valid, you know, but they corrupted it and started uh, promoting uh, music that was degrading. I know Ray Brown mentioned that many years ago. We don't have any radio station. We're musicians. We have all this music, but we don't own a radio station. We don't own, you know, we don't own anything. And most musicians don't even own the compositions they write. You know, the the record label takes it, you know. So um, that's all in in line and in step with the corruption of the music today from being good songs and, and uplifting songs to having degrading songs. Like, I don't know whether you know this song, WAP, W-A-P by Cardi B and who, somebody, the, th the Stallion. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, uh, that's not a great thing, you know. But, but we've been doing that all along. Like, there have been so old blues songs, like There's Another Mule, kicking in your stool, in your stall, you know, but the, at least it was double entendre, and it, it was had humor. Now, it's just out and out, just nasty, <laughs> you know, you can, if, I mean, if that's what you like, you know, that's one thing, but you don't need to force that on young people and kids, you know, uh, that's the way I feel. Once you play it, the, you, you're t putting that energy out there. You know, you're sending it out wherever it goes, you know. Like I, I said the other day when I was meditating and I'm listening to my bell, uh, my bowl, my singing bowl, and I'm listening to it until the sound disappears. And I say, well, where does the sound go? Where do, I'm hearing it, but, and then it disappears. But it doesn't really disappear. I just don't hear it anymore. But it's still, I want to go there. <laughs> wherever that sound, but that's where we're trying to go. You know, as musicians, you're trying to go beyond what you hear now. You want to go hear, hear something that nobody's ever heard and only you can hear, you know. So when I, today when I play, you know, I'm, I'm playing, at least I'm trying to play good energies, to send good energies out there to try to defeat these bad energies, which they keep promoting. You know, they're being promoted. They've got big corporations promoting this bad energies, you know, which is indicative of the whole world. It's bad energies almost everywhere, which, you know, the climate denials, you know, the, you see what's happening, you know, people. Uh, but, but media can make you see other things. And when I say media, I don't just mean TV, radio and things. I mean movies, magazines, you know, things like that. Um, you don't see, po I don't see many positive uh, things happening like that. Yeah, so, so my thing is, you know, I'll do it myself, you know, and it might not go any further than my house or my neighborhood, but I'm still putting it out there. That's good energies. Mm -hmm. 